Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. My reflection today I've entitled The Proof of the True Church. The Proof of the True Church. This is the feast of Saints Thecla and Silouan. And I'll explain in just a minute how these two incredible saints are part of the proof of the true church. But in my nation, in the United States, there are thousands and thousands of uh, religious communities that are registered with the United States government as the church, uh, all calling themselves the church. In fact, I remember when we were just uh, starting our community, our own parish uh, back in the 90s, we were in a, a warehouse uh, in an industrial park. Uh, we was, it was actually an old machine shop, had no windows, <laughs> right next to a train track. We used to be celebrating the liturgy in there and in the sacred anaphora. We would start to hear the trains come through like clockwork on uh, Sundays and the whole building would shake. <laughs> I remember one day I was sitting in my office, which looked out onto the industrial area there. And I saw someone nailing up a sign and uh, the sign was uh, a sign for a new church in the same industrial park. And it said, Holy Spirit Church. And I thought to myself, interesting. Uh, here's a person uh, nailing a sign up in which they're calling themselves the church. Uh, it lasted for a few months and then it disappeared. Really, if, if someone was driving through that industrial park and they saw St. Andrew Orthodox Church and they saw the Holy Spirit Church, the sign, they would see two signs. Both communities uh, beginning uh, in this industrial park, and they might think to themselves, gosh, I wonder, what does it mean to be the church? And who says that that person can put that sign up or that sign up? How do you know, in fact, what is the true church? When there are so many competitors, so many uh, religious groups saying that they are the church. Um, but can you just say you're the church? If you feel a certain way or believe a certain thing, does that necessarily make you the church? I think not. Of course, there's many answers to the question, what is the proof of the true church? One might think immediately of the fourth paragraph of the Nicene Creed. Of course, the creed is just four simple paragraphs, a paragraph about God, the Father Almighty, a paragraph about his only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, a paragraph about the Holy Spirit, and then a paragraph about the church and the sacraments. And in that last paragraph, we say in the Nicene Creed that we confess our faith in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. These are the qualities, the characteristics of the true church, the church that Jesus established 2,000 years ago. It doesn't just have that necessary history since it's connected to his origination, but it has the qualities uh, of oneness, holiness, Catholicity, and apostolicity. But I'm not going to talk about those things. Instead, I want from the celebration today of Saints Thecla and Silouan on the 24th of September, I want to talk about a different proof, but a necessary and an inescapable proof of the true church. And that is the saints. The church produces the saints. The true church where the Holy Trinity lives, where the grace of the mysteries abound, produces holiness, produces love. The true church can show its authenticity, always shows its authenticity by producing holy people, by healing people. The church is, in fact, the hospital of souls on the earth. And she shows her authenticity by taking sinners like me and you and saving us, curing us of our path, path passions and spiritual pathologies and teaching us to be uh, like Christ. And in fact, in every generation and in every place that the church goes, she makes saints. And these saints are the proof of the authenticity of the church. No saints, no church. <laughs> this is the bottom line. And today we see the wide reach uh, uh, historically of the power of the true church to make saints. We are celebrating this day, the life of the Holy female proto-martyr, woman proto-martyr, Thecla, and we're also celebrating the recent saint, Saint Silouan the Athenite, the great ascetic of Mount Athos, uh, who died in 1938. These two great saints uh, are on the opposite ends of the historical spectrum of the church's life. 
St. Thecla, in fact, was a young girl who was uh, living in Asia Minor and heard St. Paul preach and was one uh, to the Christian faith. Uh, she ended her engagement to uh, a young man who didn't take it well, and she embraced uh, her life as a Christian, and she embraced the asceticism of consecrated celibacy. She became a virgin of Christ, or as St. Athanasius the Grace coined it, a bride of Christ. And she lived a beautiful, beautiful, martyric, long, glorious life. She is much loved by the entire uh, Orthodox world, especially in the Patriarchate of Antioch, of which I'm a member, uh, St. St. Thecla has a, a central position. In fact, I was blessed uh, to visit uh, uh, St. Thecla's holy places uh, and uh, in, in Syria, in Malula, where she is uh, said to have ended her life when God hid her in Iraq from those who were persecuting her. She was uh, uh, an extremely zealous and devoted young girl who has become a model for us all for the last 2,000 years. In fact, uh, there is a pilgrimage every year at the Antiochian village uh, dedicated to St. Thecla. Her icon is there, and she's uh, very dear to, to us. St. Siloan was uh, also a simple man. He was a simple Russian peasant uh, who God called to the monastic life, and he went to the Russian monastery of St. Pantolemon on the Holy Mountain, and there lived for 45 years as a monk and became uh, a God-bearing elder, someone who, uh, who was able to have the prayer of Jesus going constantly in his heart and was able to acquire the humility of Christ. In fact, he has since taught the world, uh, especially by the propagation of his teachings through his spiritual son, elder now Saint Sophroni of Essex, uh, England, the whole world has been captivated. Our hearts have been won by the teachings of St. Siloan, who have taught, who, who's taught us from his own experience that uh, the foundation upon which all spiritual accomplishment is made, upon all of which all holiness is built, is the foundation of the acquisition of humility. He learned this from our Lord Jesus directly, who told him to keep his mind in hell, but to despair not. Both St. Thecla and St. Siloan uh, are united today, not only as two saints that prove the authenticity of the church uh, from the early period of the church to the very recent period of the church, uh, and also they're united by their extreme asceticism, their great spiritual athleticism, their great devotion to acquiring the grace of the Holy Spirit, which was their, their goal in life. But they're also united by their incredible desire to help uh, men and women who were in their worlds, their friends and family and acquaintances, to uh, become Christians. Um, St. Thecla uh, won and sought to win her, her friends and family, and she joined Paul in his apostolic missionary labors. And St. Siloan said that, the, that he retreated from the world into monastic life in order that he might then embrace the world by prayer that all men might come to know God in the Holy Spirit. These common qualities of uh, devotion to Christ, the acquisition of humility, uh, the pursuit, relentless pursuit of holiness, and the love of people, even enemies, uh, with a great desire to bring them to the church. This is, these, these are fundamental and basic to all the lives of the saints. And they show, in fact, dear ones, uh, that the church is who she says she is. Uh, the one holy Catholic and apostolic church proves it. She proves her claims by the saints in every generation, uh, wherever she goes. This is the proof of the true church. When I was uh, a Protestant Christian, we had... Uh, heroes. We had heroes like Martin Luther and John Calvin, but anyone reading the lives of the saints who would then read the lives of those uh, great uh, magisterial reformers could see very clearly that they were no saints. 
Uh, they had many passions, uh, which is one of the reasons that they could never get along and almost killed each other in the case of Luther and Zwingli. And also even the very devoted, um, as, as a young Protestant, I knew many, many very devoted Christian peoples, Protestant Christian peoples, who loved God, who prayed faithfully, who cared about people, who studied the scriptures. And certainly no one can uh, love God and study the Holy Scriptures and uh, and attempt to be a faithful disciple of Jesus without a uh, great blessing and the help of the Holy Spirit to, to acquire many, many beautiful virtues. But I remember in my catechesis to become an Orthodox Christian that I sat down and I, I read the life of a saint of the church. And it so expanded my grasp of what the potential was for a human being to become transformed and to be delivered from the dominion of sin in this life that I just wept and I gave the, the book of the saint's life to my wife and I said, sweetheart, if this is a Christian, I haven't become one yet. I'm not one. Uh, just for your information, the life was the, the life of St. Nectarios of Aegina, who died in 1920, written by Sotos Hondropoulos, a very beautiful life. But I learned uh, just what it meant to be approaching the one holy Catholic and apostolic church and what she could do and what the potential of human transfiguration in the church and with the holy mysteries really is uh, capable of doing and what she always does uh, to the glory of the Holy Trinity and for the salvation of us sinners. May the Lord be praised on this glorious feast of Saints Fecla and Siloan, which gives proof to the authenticity of the church and may their example inspire us all. God be with you. If you're interested, dear ones, if you're interested in more about the life of St. Siloan, I would direct you to the marvelous lectures by Father Zachariah, uh, Father Zacharias Zaharu of the Monastery of St. John the Baptist, St. Saffroni's Monastery. Uh, we have a beautiful eight lecture series by him on the ascetical and pastoral theology of St. Siloan and Archimandrite Saffroni. Uh, just click on the link below. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present a four-part lecture series by Father Josiah Trenum, entitled God's Prodigal Prophet, an Exposition of the Prophecy of Jonah. This text is found amongst the minor prophets of the Old Testament and is much beloved by believers, not only for its Christological typology, in which it sets forth the death, burial, plundering of Hades and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, but also because it is simply packed full of spiritual themes like obedience, repentance, sinful nationalism, God's call to mission, the enlightenment of the nations, brokenness, rebellion, and grace, the love of enemies, and much, much more. For these and other available titles, visit our website at patristicnectar.org.